Hey, howdy, how the heck are you doing today? Today I've got four tips for hacks for your portable generator. Okay, here in Texas, portable generators have been, as you can imagine, all the rage. But after we've installed literally, gosh, probably hundreds now since February, it's on your mind, you lose power, you know, snow apocalypse, feeling helpless, prompts a lot of focus. So here's some things, some takeaways from having done a lot of portable generator installs with a lot of customers that they're not thinking up front, and I don't think you are either yet. So I've got four, so let's talk about them. First of all is your generator inlet. All that is, here's a, sh a shiny Generac. This is gonna be attached to your house and wired to your panel to feed power from the generator back into your house. So here's the thing, this needs to be located in a good spot for you. A couple things here on this first point. One, don't install it too low or too high. You're gonna to have to, in the middle of the night, wrestle a stiff cord and get it plugged into here. Make sure you're familiar ahead of time. But the thing is, don't bury this behind uh, don't bury it behind a tree or a shrub or a fence. When the power's out, you've got to take this cord. This is a 30, an L1430. I'm lining it up with the ground. You've got to be able to find that, get it seated, and twist. Okay? So on the video, it's like, oh, it's a piece of cake. At 1 in the morning, bad weather, zombie apocalypse, not so easy. Think about where you're putting this thing, all right? So that's the first point. The second point, and again, you would think, ah, James, it's common sense. You get this work done, where are you gonna put your cord? Where are you gonna store it? I did the same thing when I first thought about it, blank look. Because in your mind, you're like, well, wherever. Once again, power's out, when's the power gonna go out? You don't know. You don't know. Put it with a generator, zip tie it, tape it, do something so this does not wander off and get lost. So you're saying, well, how can it be lost? It'll be in my garage, probably. So lost is, here's my definition of old husband lost. When you need it and you're panicky, can you find it in less than a minute? If you can't, it's lost. Run with that. Second part about the cord, get a longer cord than you think you need. For God's sake, don't be cheap. Be offended. I have so many people say, well, I want to save, you know, 50 bucks. So I'm going to get a short cord. And I'm just going to park the generator right next to my inlet. Are you? Mm, my, my point is probably not. Okay, so part of this is where the generator has to go. You've got exhaust, you've got a huge noise, they're so loud. Um, and that is that spot that's right next to this inlet, is it level? A lot of the new generators won't run if they're not on level ground. I'm just telling you, get a longer cord than you think you need, give yourself some choices, all right? All right. Um, Maintenance. I'm going to hit this point now. Point number three, make a plan to do maintenance. A lot of you homeowners, I'm an electrician so I deal with you all the time, you don't do maintenance on your house. Maintenance is when it breaks down and there's a lot of complaining, then we do maintenance. With a generator, because it's an emergency piece of equipment, you need to do regular scheduled maintenance. It's like owning another car. What happens when you don't put oil in your car? Stops running. What happens when you don't change the air filter? Stops running. So if your generator has sat under all your Christmas yard decorations for a year, power goes out, you dig it out, and it's been sitting for a year, and you pull it out, it, there's a 50-50 chance it's not going to start. Should, but it may not. So here's what I'm telling you, at least quarterly, put it on your calendar, trot that bad boy out, start it. Make sure it starts. Depending on what kind of fuel you have, if it's propane or gas, make sure your fuel's okay, okay? Do the maintenance. I know, so boring. Telling you, when the zombies are clawing at your front door, you haven't done the maintenance, not gonna run. Lights won't be on. Fourth point, uh, last point, whenever you get this stuff installed, this, the inlet switch uh, to transfer, while your electrician or your contractor is there, do a dry run while everybody's there. It's only gonna take about 10 minutes, okay? Hopefully. 
Point being is make sure you know how to run this thing, do the transfer when it's sunshiny and everybody's there and you have all the people there to give you answers, okay? Make sure the generator is ready. Here's why, most of us are super busy and what we're going to do is we're going to sort of check the block. I've got it installed, the generator's out there, we're fine, but you never do a test run. So when are you going to do your test run? When the power's out and you need it to work the first time. Don't do that, okay? Run through, make sure that you know how to do the transfer of an interlock switch, that basically that your um, main breaker is off and your generator breaker is on. Normally it'll be the other way. If this was the generator breaker, it would be off and your main breaker would be on, okay? The big thing about the interlock, one is that these breakers are super stiff and you feel like you're gonna break them and you're not. You're gonna have to muscle them. But in your dry run, you have to practice doing the main breaker off from the utility and your generator breaker on, okay? They cannot be on at the same time. The reason is that the utility company power comes back on, and it should, you don't want it to backfeed into your generator and destroy your generator. In that fight, the utility company is gonna win, okay? So there's your four points, uh, just hacks, practical things that we've learned from working with a lot of homeowners. Um, make sure that you cover these four things and consider them when you're doing your install. Have fun with your portables and survive. See ya.